Hi, this is Richard Burdick, and today I'm doing a short demonstration or uh, introduction to a premiere, a composition premiere I have coming up January 16th and 17th at the Government House series for the Regina Symphony Orchestra. I'm really excited about this. Um, it's octet variations for flute, oboe, clarinet, bassoon, trumpet, horn, violin, and double bass. It's a rather unusual ensemble. It's wind quintet plus trumpet, violin, and double bass. Um, it's the remainders of the symphony who don't play in the string quartet, uh, the, the 12 core members. Um, first of all, the, this work, uh, Octet Variations Opus 234, is the, the start is inspired by Bach. Um, there's a number of Bach cantatas that to me sound like they just start right in the middle of the work, right? It, it's, it, there's no introduction, just start sort of halfway in the middle. And I really like that. I, I like a lot of what Bach does um, in this. Maybe he lost the first page of some of his cantatas, but in that case, this work starts like that. Um, but, oh, before I do that, um, I wanted to give a little introduction. Uh, I was born in Berkeley, California in 1961. And at that time, Darius Mio, the French composer, part of the Six, uh, was teaching composition at Mills College in Oakland. Um, I actually had some, studied with Terry Riley in, in Mills College in the late 70s, and then worked for the Mills Brass Trio in the mid 80s. So I spent a fair amount of time in Mills College, never meeting Darius Mio, but uh, work that I really like, and I find that it's very similar to what I do today, is Darius Mio's 12th Symphony. He, he writes lots of melodic stuff, but it's bouncing around between instruments and overlapping and sort of being a fabric of sound, melodic sound. And that's pretty much what I do. So here's a sample of uh, Darius Mio's Symphony Number no. 12. Uh, it also was premiered in UC Davis, where I've spent some time. Um, so uh, Symphony Number no. 12 starting at 5 minutes and 34 seconds. Maybe. So it's melodic, yet very fragmented and, and jumping around all over the place. Um, the Octet Variations is actually of mine, is actually based on a little snippet from my Chamber Symphony Number no. 10, which I wrote back in December of 2014. Uh, I couldn't find the exact quote, so maybe it's not true, but um, the last movement, the fifth movement of this, has something similar starting. Not that, but this section. Somewhere in that little section, it sounds like the octet opening. And the octet opening, like I said, it starts, sounds like it starts right in the middle of things. And it goes on from there. The first part is theme, fugue, and mini variations. The mini variations give, give a lot of the different instruments a little solo. Um, the flute and oboe have this nice little part here. Uh-oh. That's actually what's heard in the finale, uh, broadened into the brass. Um, we have an important double bass part, which I'm not seeing right now. And oh, here's the double bass part. Um, There's 
also a really great bassoon part, bassoon solo in that first part. Uh, and then um, at the same time I was writing this, I was recording my CD of Matthew Locke, early Baroque music for three French horns. And um, I was inspired by the dance suite of that music. Uh, so I used the first movement, first variations is in a stampy, which is a uh, 13th or 14th century dance. And this features the violin and double bass, uh, but it also has a really cool uh, trumpet part where he's going open with the, or closed with the plunger and then sliding it gradually open. So it has a slide effect. Um, a fairly aggressive, the whole, whole work is fairly caffeinated. So that's the estampi. And then the next part is the sarabande, which is directly inspired by Matthew Locke, but still with the same melodic stuff that I mix in that opening bag of melodies. And then, this is my cat Brighton. He, he thinks he wants to go outside today when it's only 12 degrees Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit outside. He'll probably go out, but right now he's begging. The, the next moment, the fourth moment, is a pavan, and it features the flute, um, well, later on the clarinet. Um, it's a melody that goes forwards and backwards. It's, it's inverted. Here's the transition to the pavan. And the pavan. I think it's very pretty. The melody goes forwards and then inverted. Um, then we have, before, before the last moment, which is the little jig, we have the finale. And the finale brings back into the brass the um, music that we heard in the flute and oboe in the introduction. jumps around like Mio, and then we have the jig, final jig. I thought of it as a coda or an encore, uh, but really the movements run t straight together. And the whole work is only seven minutes, so I'm probably talking more right now than the whole length of the work. Uh, it's exciting. Um, here's a sample of the jig. If I, oh no, what? So that's the whole work in a nutshell. Um, the concert is January 16th and 17th, 2016. And the program is titled Winds of Change. And really, I'm not saying there's anything changing here because I'm showing you that 1961, Darius Mew was writing just like the way I'm writing today, except for maybe the fact that I'm using some I Ching based scales hidden in the structure of the music. But it's a dance suite, a Renaissance, no, a late Renaissance or early Baroque dance suite style, um, modern instruments. It's going to be a really nice program, and I hope you can come and enjoy it. Otherwise, there'll be a demo on YouTube. I can't um, make the recording of the concert public, but maybe someone wants to record it someday. So thanks for watching, and Happy New Year.